So this video is all about RPMs. We're gonna do first a bench test and we're gonna go over it in the actual unit. So right now, bench test, no load, no airflow restriction, not even the wheel on it. We're gonna check it in high speed and then in low speed. Of course, I got all the other instruments set up if you're interested. Looking like 1,195 RPM. Now checking low speed, the red wire. 1,192.6 RPM. So we can see with high speed running at 1,195 RPMs, and in low speed it was 1,192 RPM. So the RPM was almost identical between these because there was no load to it. It's actually, this motor's rated at 1075, we're spinning at 1,195 RPM. So it's spinning much faster than what it's rated for, and that's because of the synchronous speed versus the actual RPM. So the synchronous speed is what the electricity is speeding that around at, and so here without any load at all, not even the blower wheel, it's able to get pretty close to that synchronous speed. Now once we put the weight of the wheel on, that slows down, and then also how much resistance of air we have. And the difference is the slip. What we do is when we use lower speeds, we actually tap the windings in a different location and it makes the motor weaker. It adds more resistance and it makes the motor ultimately weaker. By making the motor weaker, we end up having more slip. In other words, the, uh, the motor's not as strong and so it's not able to turn as fast and so we end up with the end result is the blower wheel does turn slower. The blower wheel itself is turning at a slower speed. However, the, the synchronous speed is still trying to be the same. We just essentially made it weaker. So by putting it on those lower speeds, it will use less uh, amps in it, less wattage in it, we're moving less volume of air, and the end result is turning at a slower RPM. Now let's put this all together. We're talking about high speed in the system, no airflow restriction whatsoever. Now we're moving a whole lot of cubic weight of air. The weight of air is a lot, so we're using more electrical energy, more watts, to move more volume of air. Now the motor, you can see how fast it's turning. But ultimately, the motor itself is turning the slowest, meaning we have the max amount of slip between the synchronous speed of the electricity in the motor and the actual motor RPM. But as we add just a little bit of airflow restriction, like we should have on any system, any ductwork, we add just a little bit of airflow restriction, we can see that the motor's speeding up and it's going faster because we're moving less weight of air. We actually end up with more air bypass on the blower itself, which means we're doing less work, which means less watts of energy. That also means because the motor is able to turn faster, we end up with more inductive reactants, and that more inductive reactants means more ohms of resistance, which means it's harder for the electrons to flow through, which means less or lower amps. But in this case, we're pulling right around, we're turning right around 1075 RPM, and the motor's rated for 1075. So our amperage should match right at that point. But what happens when we have more airflow restriction? We start blocking off half of the airflow. We have end up with a lot more airflow restrictions, but really we're moving less cubes of air. We're moving less weight of air, which means we're using less work on the motor, less wattage. But moving less weight of air also means the wheel is able to free spin. It's able to have more and more bypass, which means the RPMs of this motor will start to go up. Because we have more RPMs, we've increased the inductive reactants. In other words, there's more ohms of resistance, which means we have less amperage coming through, which also accounts for less wattage overall. But the cool thing is because we're spinning faster, we end up with actually more back EMF across our capacitor. When we block the air airflow all the way completely, we've blocked all the air, we're not moving weights of air anymore. We're actually having most of the air just bypassing inside. It's just kind of free spinning in there. So the RPM increases. Because we're moving less weight of air, we end up with the less watts of energy. As this motor is turning faster, we end up with more inductive reactants, which means greater ohms of resistance electron flow, which means our amperage slows down. So we're slowing the amperage down. But because the wheel itself is turning faster, we're putting more back EMF across the capacitor and we slightly, just slightly increase the amperage coming to the start winding. But it's definitely more back EMF in the capacitor. 
ultimately, we still end up with a lot of heat on the motor because we're moving less air across the motor. So we can still burn the motor up with that happening. But now let's go to low speed. Now we're putting it to low speed, which means we've added coils of wire inside. We've added resistance to electron flow just by adding more windings, which ultimately makes the motor weaker. So now when we're using low speed, the synchronous speed, the electronic speed of the motor is still the same. What's happening is we're able to make the motor weaker, so we end up with more slip between how fast the wheel's actually turning and what the synchronous speed is. So yeah, because we're weaker, we're able to move less weight of air. Because we're moving less weight of air, we end up with less wattage of energy we're being used. But we add just a little bit of airflow restriction, we see that there's still gonna be bypass. Now we're moving even less weight of air, and that air is bypassing, so the motor actually starts to increase. The RPMs go up more, which means more inductive reactants or more ohms of resistance, which means um, less likely of having electrons flow because there's more resistance to its flow. And so less electron flow, our wattage drops more, but because the motor is turning faster, we get a little bit more back EMF across the capacitor. And then as we block it halfway, we're having way less weight of air we're moving. So it's less wattage of energy on the motor, but because we have less weight of air, there's more air bypassing on the blower wheel, which means the wheel itself speeds up, which means more inductive reactants, in other words, higher ohms of resistance, which means that less amperage flowing to the motor itself, because it's turning faster, higher back EMF on the capacitor. And then if we block it all the way, the coil is frozen, dirty filter, whatever, there's no airflow moving at all, we're not moving any weight of air. So we have the least amount of wattage on the motor and this motor itself starts to free spin. We're getting air bypassing around itself and it's just free spinning in the air, which means it speeds up its RPM. Because we're speeding up the RPM, we have more inductive reactants, more ohms of resistance, less electron flow total. But because we end up speeding, spinning this motor faster, we end up creating more back EMF and that puts more voltage against the capacitor. Now it's gonna be still less than it was on high speed, because you're not turning as fast, but it still increases it. So when we're talking about the speeds of the motor, really we're talking about the horsepower of the motor. As we put this motor in high speed, we're using the full capacity of this motor, and then as we use the lower and lower speeds, it's able to have less work being done. It's able to move less air, even though the actual synchronous speed of the motor is still gonna be the same. The only way we can change the actual synchronous speed of the motor is changing the number of poles or changing the frequency. Still, even if you drop the voltage, the synchronous speed's trying to be the same. You just end up causing more slip and also, you know, you'll end up burning something out. So hopefully that helps. I think motors are fascinating. They're really cool.